One of the questions I'm frequently asked is how I choose a subject to paint. The short answer is that I just walk around in some natural place until something strikes me. It's purely an emotional choice. But explaining why a subject has such a strong emotional impact on me is more difficult. I'll try to do that in this video. I can remember as if it were yesterday, the time I fell in love with an Engelmann spruce. It knocked me off my feet. My wife Joyce and I were cross-country skiing in Banff, a Canadian national park in Alberta. The sun behind a pearly sky and the haze made the forest look soft and feathery, a perfect background against which to appreciate the ruggedness of the Engelmann, one of the toughest trees in North America. Big pillows of snow on the branches would have softened the image, but instead, a fine granular snow outlined each twig separately, accentuating their claw-like appearance. As if that were not enough excitement, it was decorated with bright yellow wolf moss in celebration of the season. I stuck my ski poles into the snow to free my hands and took out my camera. I paint from photographs when it's 20 below zero. As I was adjusting the camera, I heard this faint laughter growing louder. It was Joyce, skiing toward me back along the trail. When she got within earshot, I heard her say, I knew it. I knew you would stop there. I knew that was a Tiberius. We both had a great laugh because many times before she had pointed out a scene and asked me if I thought it a worthy subject for painting. Mostly, I didn't. Then she would ask me what was wrong with it. Nothing, I answered, but I couldn't explain why. Today, she frequently points out scenes that are perfect subjects for me. Somehow, she's discovered the kind of subjects I like to paint. So, if another person could learn what I'm looking for, then I'm making choices based on some real features rather than a random emotional twitch triggered by some mystical force. If that is true, I should be able to describe the features in this video. My approach is to review many paintings looking for features common to the scenes I've selected for the paintings. First, almost all my subjects are in a natural setting. My preference is for the kind of scene that Thoreau called untrammeled nature in his book On Walden Pond. I've had this preference for natural settings for a long time. Here's a painting of a natural setting that I painted back in 1975. I do respect the skill of gardeners who can shape plants into elephants or make formal gardens like these, but I've never been inspired to paint one of these. Another desirable feature of many of my favorite subjects is a wide color range. I can still remember the emotional rush I got when I first saw this patch of sumac in the rain. It's a whole rainbow. But there is also something attractive about a restricted color range. It raises your awareness to subtle differences in shades of color. Restricted color range is one of the features that attracted me about this scene of a red-shouldered hawk. The feathers echoed all the colors of the cypress trees. And of course, there's a story here too. The hawk's colors are designed to blend into the background to avoid detection by its prey. This focusing effect of restricted color range happens in everyday life, too. For example, when I was thinking about matching a tie to my blue shirt. The red tie on a blue shirt is a classic, of course. <clears throat> but the blue tie is also attractive because my eye is drawn to the subtle differences in shades of blue in the tie. Value range is also important. Value is what artists mean by how dark or light something is. The value range of this painting goes from an almost black shadow on the tree to the whitest snow. An extensive value range makes a scene dramatic. Zooming is another important feature. Sometimes my emotional response kicks in when I see something from a distance, as in this painting of the aspen trees in the Wasatch Mountains. Other times I have to view something closer before I feel it. 
Take this old sugar maple tree. There's so much to look at here. Old branches that have fallen off and are speckled with fungus, a huge shelf mushroom on the side, deep scars and texture. It shows the wear and scars of advanced age. I don't need to zoom any further to stimulate interest. In contrast, this little red maple is not very interesting when viewed from the same distance as the old sugar maple. You need to get closer to see what makes it special. Its main feature of interest is the repeating pattern of red, orange, and green leaves. From a distance, these red dogwood bushes look like old brooms. From a distance, the wild tangle of colors are not discernible. But in the closer perspective that I use for my painting, you can see the dazzling colors of the branches decorated with new leaves spraying out like little green fountains. This photo of a blue heron beside a willow is an attractive scene of rocks and water, but the subject is the heron and the willow. Here's a photograph of the same scene zoomed in. With this picture, I begin to get the feeling that made me want to paint the subject. And here is the composition that I made from the several close-up photographs. Finally, some natural features cannot be seen at all from a distance. From a distance, the flowers of bindweed, as in this painting, look like specks of white in a field. Only when you zoom in can you appreciate the subtle beauty of the flowers. Complexity and surprise contribute a lot to the emotional impact of a subject. If you're going to hang a painting on your wall where you'll see it every day, you don't want to tire of looking at it after a minute. This scene I painted from the Corkscrew Swamp Sanctuary was one of the most complex paintings I have ever attempted. I expected the many layers of vines and leaves and trees to be challenging, but what was new for me was the water. I had also painted reflections in water before, but here the reflections of the trees in the background were overlain by streaks of yellow light coming from the left. Where these two light sources met, they reinforced one another to form a white streak in the middle of the painting. This painting of ferns among the cypress trees has no water or tricky reflections as the previous one did, but it's not a simple composition. Its complexity arises from layer upon layer of ferns and trees, and they grow in unpredictable formations, which is what I mean by surprise. Of course, lighting is critical in choosing a subject. Our ability to see a subject is possible only when light strikes it, and changes in lighting condition can dramatically alter its appearance. I've read that Monet, in his series of paintings of the Rouen Cathedral, painted for just a little while on each painting, so he was always painting at the same time of day on each painting. My favorite story about lighting happened at the start of a mountain trail in Colorado. The early morning light was beginning to spread over the far valley, while the near valley was still cloaked in a deep cerulean blue. The entire scene was framed by the smooth yellow ochre bark of trembling aspens. They were almost completely backlighted, making the leaves translucent. Only thin strips of sun struck their trunks. I quickly set up my tripod to get some high-quality pictures from which I could make a composition back at the studio. I was feeling a little guilty because we had a long hike ahead of us, and if I were going to be stopping every hundred yards, we would never make it to the lake at the top of the mountain. But I knew that I had better get the pictures now, because on the way back down, the lighting would be totally different. And it was. On the way back down, I almost walked right past the spot without even recognizing it. Lighting is that critical. Certainly, familiarity plays a role in the attractiveness of a subject. It took me more than a year to become familiar with the cypress forest shown in this painting. At first, I couldn't make sense of it. Everything seemed to be growing on top of everything else in a mass profusion. But eventually, I began to understand it and appreciate it, 
In the same way that a complex piece of music becomes intelligible if you listen to it again and again. Over time, the brain finds patterns in your experience. I'm sure that these are some of the features that are common in my paintings. I'm not so sure that these are the features that influence my choice of a subject. But if they aren't, then the choice is a mystery to me.